So we have already seen that how we can represent number in different uh, number systems, decimal, I mean, octal, binary, and convert into decimal. And we have already seen the conversion of a number from base, any base, to decimal. We have been talking about like how to convert a uh, number in octal system to decimal by multiplying it with eight uh, because it's a base eight system. Similarly for binary number system. Now let's talk about the other way around, how we convert a decimal number into any respective uh, base. Okay, so in order to convert any number system, any decimal value into a respective base, what we need to do is to first divide the number and all successive quotients by R. R corresponds to the base here. If you are converting, if you are converting it into, uh, converting a decimal number into binary, what we will be doing? Dividing the value by two, okay? Keep dividing the value by two. If you are converting a decimal value into octal, we have to divide it by eight. And if you're converting into decim from decimal to hexadecimal, we have to divide it by 16. So let's convert 41 decimal value into binary. So 41 is first divided by two to give an integer quotient of 20 and a remainder of one. When you divide 41 by two, it will give a quotient and a remainder. So quotient is 20 and a remainder value is one. Then the quotient, which was 20, has to be divided again by two, okay? And it will keep dividing until it becomes zero, okay? So this is how you perform the division, uh, sorry, uh, conversion from decimal to binary. So you started off with 41, okay? You divide it by two to get a new quotient, 20, and this is the remainder, one. So you write remainder like this, okay? You, you then divide again, the running quotient, which is 20, it gives you 10, and the remainder is zero because it was perfectly divisible. And then 10 is divided by two again, gives the quotient five, and the remainder is zero. Then five is divided by two, it gives you a quotient two, and the remainder one. And two is divided by two again, gives a quotient one, and the remainder is zero. And one cannot be divided, so it actually gives a quotient zero, and the remainder one. Okay, so once the quotient is quotient becomes zero, that is your stopping point. You have to stop there, okay? And how you read this is from top to bottom. So this is the A zeroth bit, which is the rightmost bit, okay? And this is the leftmost bit, A5. So you read it from top to bottom. So what is the actual number? If you were to write a binary equivalent of 41, 10, what would it be, 41, 10 is equivalent to what? Hmm? Please be louder. One zero one zero zero one is writing from left to right. So one zero one zero zero one, and this is two. Okay, so this is how you can convert decimal into binary. Okay, any question? the previous one. We will learn how we can quickly convert rather than following this division procedure. Similarly, conversion of a decimal into base eight, as I mentioned, uh, or base 16, you have to divide eight and by eight and 16 respectively. So fractional number conversion is not uh, needed for this course in order to understand the computer architecture. So that's why I'm omitting this. Otherwise, you can learn and download my digital logic design lectures from my website in if you want to understand fractional number conversion. Anyway, so let's proceed ahead. So there is also a hack of how we can quickly convert a decimal number into binary rather than following that division procedure, okay? So we can obtain by adding only those numbers with a power of two corresponding to the bits that are equal to one. So remember this pattern the general pattern. A times, sorry, two to the power zero is the rightmost weight, weight of the rightmost bit. And then two to the power one, so you, this is two to the power zero, one, two. So what you need to do is 
sorry. So this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So if you have to convert 41 decimal into binary, you need to set those bits which has a weight equivalent, which will sum up to equivalent to one, uh, 41. Okay, so let's say um, in this series, which bit we can set to one? We can set A5 to one, okay, because this is 32. Can we set A4 to one? We can set this A5 to one because when this one bit is one, it will be multiplied by 32 and we have a value 32. And then plus, can we set A4 to one? If we set A4 to one, the total sum would become 32 plus 16, which is greater than 41, which means that we should not be setting it to one. So we can set it to zero. Plus, what about this A3? We can set it to one because it will make the sum 40. So we have to go to 41. So A2 we cannot set to 1. So we will set it to 0. Plus A1 is also set to 0. And here this one should be set to 1. Okay? So when we add all these together, so this is the binary equivalent 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? This is how it is. Okay? So this is the binary equivalent of 41 decimal value. You need to practice this because you will be frequently doing this throughout this course. Okay? Any question? Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is a hack of avoiding those uh, like a division procedure. Okay? So many a times you need to convert the decimal to binary or binary to decimal. So you would not want to follow this, draw a table and divide, keep dividing the quotient value by two or whatever the, uh, the number system you're converting in. So you can easily convert this into. And the most common system that we will be dealing with is binary and um, the hexadecimal, okay? Octal is not really used. So always remember the magnitude, a binary digits pattern, one, two, four, eight, 16. So if it's the rightmost bit, the weight is 1, and then 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So if I were to ask you to convert this 19 decimal to binary, what do you think uh, would be an answer? Following this, this pattern, keeping this pattern in your mind, you can easily set the number of bits to 1, which bits should be set to 1, and which one should be set to 0. Yep? It's starting from right. OK, tell me if it's starting from right. Yeah, what will be the answer? Um, or one, zero, zero, one. Okay, so this is exactly, wait a minute, let me correct this. Clear up and run. Yeah. So one, one, because this makes three, and this is 16, 16 plus three is 19. Everything else is set to zero, okay? So this is actually the main answer. If you are asked to represent a number, decimal number into binary in certain number of bits. So for example, if I ask you to represent 19 decimal into a byte, okay? Then what you need to do is to include, this is the actual answer, the byte contains eight bits. So you need to include these leading zeros as well, three leading zeros, to, to represent 19 decimal into a byte, okay? So this is again important from your quiz or exams point of view. You should know if I ask you to represent a binary equivalent in a byte, you should remember that you should not only be including this, also the leading zeros, okay? Although it has no significance, but the representation of a binary number in a byte, which is comprised of eight bits, so you need to include the leading zeros as well, okay? Any question? Yep. Is, so we should always have the leading zeros or which ones do we 
No, you should not always have the leading zero unless it's specified. So if you are required to represent a number, the binary equivalent in a byte, then you know the byte has eight bits. So this is actual results. This is the actual result of the uh, actual representation of 19. But since you are asked to represent it in a byte, so you have to add three uh, leading zeros. OK? If I ask you to represent in two bytes, which is generally referred as half word, then you have to add that many zeros. OK? What about this? If you have to convert 1010 binary to decimal quickly, how can you do that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the answer? 10. So once you remember this pattern, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on, you can easily convert from binary to decimal or decimal to binary. So here, 1010, 10, 0, it means 1010. 0, 1, 0. So you can simply add 8 and 2 together to get the final result. OK? And it, is, it will be equivalent to 10. OK? All what you need to do is to remember this pattern. This is the key. OK? Any question? OK, let's proceed ahead. So while you're converting, hex format, every digit can be represented with 16 possible values, which is you can re represent 2 to the power 4. 16 means 2 to the power 4. OK? So each hexadecimal digit corresponds to four binary bits. Always remember this. So if I have a number, let's say, sorry. If I have a number, let's say A123, this is 16, I mean the hexadecimal re representation. Each digit, this 3, is corresponding to four binary bits. Okay? So if I have to tell you that you need to convert this into binary, so what will be the equivalent of binary, uh, uh, sorry, equ equivalent of 3 in binary? How do you represent 3 in binary? 1, 1. But when you are converting in from hexadecimal to binary, you need to represent this 3 in 4 bits. OK? So this is the exact conversion. Next comes 2. So 2 will be 0, 1, 0, 0. Each hexadecimal digit corresponds to 4 binary bits. OK? Again, whatever I'm discussing, it's very, very important. You guys tend to forget this and make a lot of mistakes. So whenever you are supposed to be converting hexadecimal to binary, always remember that one hexadecimal digit corresponds to four binary digits. OK? Similarly, for the octal, you can see eight possible values, 2 to the power 3. So if I have a number, let's say 7, 6, 5. And if I say this is the octal representation, so you can represent this value in binary. Each digit would be uh, corresponding to three binary digits. So five is represented with one zero one, six is represented with one one zero, and seven is represented with one one one. So this is the complete representation of this uh, octal number. Okay. Any question? A is 10, the value 10. Remember? A is equivalent to decimal 10. So you represent decimal 10 with 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And if you convert this into exactly, it would be 10. So once you practice this, you will quickly memorize the 10, what is the equivalent of 10. So this is 1, 2, 4, 8. So 8 plus 2 is 10. You can quickly do that. It all needs um, practice. Okay. 
So yeah, this is the same chart of hexadecimal equivalent of these values. 10 is equivalent to A. Similarly, 13 is equivalent to D. Its equivalent representation in octal is different. Okay, why is it different? If you are given a binary number, okay, or if I give you 13 decimal value, and if I ask you to convert it into octal, the easiest thing to do is to first convert it into binary, okay? And now next thing is, if you're converting into hexadecimal, oh, sorry, octal, you know that, wait, you know that three digits corresponds to one octal digit, right? So these three digits correspond to five, and the remaining one, assuming that these are zero, zero, it will be one, five. So this is how you can easily convert from a decimal to octal. Okay? Yep. Does the same rule apply for uh, like an array uh, of base system numbers and things? Any, any base system, yes. Yeah, so like, uh, let's say you have the, the octal format plus one as a binary array. Then you could do uh, con the conversion from binary to quadrary the same way you did with octal numbers, right? Yeah, so... Okay. Quaternary, you mean like hexadecimal? So yeah, so hex for hexadecimal, it's like uh, four bits uh, equivalent. Every digit is equivalent to four binary bits. So we usually deal with, um, I mean, as I mentioned that we, we can represent number in any base format. But the most common... to base four. Yeah. So base four means two to the power, f two. two to the power two. Yeah. Yes, so you can apply that, yes. Yes. All right, any other, yeah? Can you explain what you mean by binary system? 15? Yeah. Okay, so I was, so for example, we were given 13 decimal value, and we are supposed to convert that into um, octal of let's say even if I ask you to convert into octal it would be much easier if you convert it into binary first okay so binary equivalent of this one is I know that um, 8 2 0 and 1 this is equivalent to binary okay binary 13 so 8 2 8 2 and this is sorry 8 4 2 and 1 so 8 plus 4 12 and this one 11 now I have to convert this into octal. So I must remember that every octal digit corresponds to three binary digits, okay? So while converting into octal, so this is the, f the rightmost digit in octal, okay? So what is this value? Only this, this highlighted value, this one. This is equivalent to five, right? So five comes here and this one Assuming that these are the zeros, when nothing is there, it is assumed that it is zero, okay? And then it is equivalent to one, 15. So this is equivalent to octal 15, okay? Understand? Any other question? I would like to wind up and do some um, quick uh, terminologies discussion. So this is generally referred as least significant bit Okay, the rightmost bit. So if I use a term LSV or least significant bit, you should know that I'm talking about the rightmost bit. Okay, when I'm talking about MSV, most significant bit, I'm referring to the leftmost bit, leftmost bit, which is one. Okay, and the group of eight bits is referred as byte. We have already discussed this. Group of 32 bits is referred as word. So which we will be using very frequently. 32 bits thing is referred as word. So I will not be using 32 bits, I will be using word. Okay, so one word is a group of 32 bits. Half word is 16 bits. Okay? Okay, so each has, uh, yeah, we have discussed this. So these are some interchangeable terms which we have discussed already last time. Zero and one, false and true low and high, on and off, or same. And this corresponds to the voltage level. So this is the output. If the voltage is above four, 
it is considered as logic high. If it is below one, it is considered as logic zero. If it is in between, it is considered as a transition region where the logic is undetermined, okay? And similarly for the input, if the voltage is above three, it is considered as I have provided the input high input. If it is low, I have provided zero input, okay?